Hi guys, I hope you're all having an awesome Monday. Welcome back to our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. We have some fabulous questions, so let's jump right in, shall we? And uh, I don't know what is going on with my hair. Uh, it's having a mind of its own, so I decided to just throw it up in a ponytail. So yeah, it's <laughs> it's not looking the way that it should. Um, all right, so starting with the first question from Shamrock Girl. Do you own and use a cheap bag? One that's not even close to being a designer. Um, okay, so as far as inexpensive handbags go, um, I know longer own some of the ones that I had in the past. Um, uh, the only ones that I have that are not very close to being luxury would be my Furlas and my Longchamps. I have uh, this Furla back here. I also have the Metropolis in, um, I'm sorry, the Julia in the Oxblood. I also had it in this beautiful like baby pink. I ended up giving that that one away, but those Furlas, I ended up getting them for like a hundred bucks. Um, and I mean, I'm stoked. I love those bags and I, I swear by them. I love, love Furla. Um, again, I also have my Longchamps, but as far as other handbags, um, those are the only ones that I have besides my vintage, uh, my vintage coach pieces. Now, even though I no longer have inexpensive handbags, um, I do have some inexpensive pouches that I absolutely love. Okay, so the first one, uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you've seen it a million times. It is this little pouch. I got this from Z Gallery. It says cold hard cash. Is there cold hard cash in here? No, I hate carrying cash because I end up spending it on stupid stuff and then I can never track down where I spent it, you know? <laughs> but anyways, um, this cold hard cash thing is so awesome. I love using this as a catch-all. I've used it as a wallet. Um, I think it was 20 bucks and they had a few others. They have one that says billionaire, I think, or money something. I don't remember. It all has to do with money, <laughs> but um, it was like a this gold or this peachy one. I can't remember, but I thought that this was perfect for spring and summer and I've used it to death. But like I said, using it as a wallet, as a catch-all, as just a small of a good within my handbag, I think it's awesome. Um, I also have this little Jansport pouch that you guys have seen before. I think that this is insanely, insanely cute. It's like this itty bitty backpack. Um, it's for your wrist, although I've used it for, yeah, I've used it various ways and it packs a punch like I'm not even kidding you I think this was 20 bucks as well um, yeah I think it was 20 bucks uh, but these are super cute I, I just I think they're awesome I also have these two that I have used as catch-alls and makeup bags I got these at Target in that little dollar section I mean these are so so cute I know that they might look flimsy and you know what they are. <laughs> they're flimsy, but they're, I love the color, you know? So sometimes I end up popping these in my handbag or if I have um, like some of my shopping totes that I end up using, I just throw this in there. That way I don't have to worry about anything else, you know? So I thought that these were cute. And then the last one that I have um, is from Neiman Marcus. Now don't let the name fool you. Uh, this clutch, I think I paid, I want to say 25 bucks for it, but check it out. It is just full of rhinestone and you know me I can't I can't deny <laughs> rhinestones I think it is gorgeous and I do use this as a clutch not all the time and I'm not the craziest about clutches but sometimes I just want something that has a whole lot of sparkle to it something that doesn't have a logo something that I don't have to worry about um, that attracts attention in a completely different way if you will uh, but yeah I love this so even though I no longer have inexpensive handbags um, give me a give me a small leather good give me a pouch that's that's super cute that has a lot of sparkle or is just so obnoxious and I am all about that I will rock it till the cows come home. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I definitely like a good pouch. But I'm curious, what about you guys? Do you only have designer handbags now, or do you still have some that are less expensive, or do you go for uh, small leather goods that are less expensive? Let us know in the comment section down below. But fabulous question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Isa Garcia. I only own three luxury designer handbags, two of which are Chanel and one Gucci. All of them are pre-loved. I'm wanting to buy either a Louis Vuitton Neo Noé in red or YSL Kate Chain Wallet with tassel and dark smog. 
However, whenever I scout the pre-love market, it makes me rethink my choices as I can easily purchase two bags for the price of one. Is the experience of buying a luxury handbag brand new worth over the money I will save if I stick to pre-loved instead? This is a fabulous question. And um, is it worth it to go brand new over pre-loved or vice versa? I think it depends. And the reason I say that is because sometimes by going brand new, for example, if you are going, um, if you're going to go to Paris, I think it's worth it to buy it brand new there over uh, going pre-loved because the memory of the trip is on that bag and not to mention uh, the savings that you would get on the price difference as well. Other times, it's definitely not worth it because I feel like sometimes when you go into these boutiques, it can feel very underwhelming with the, with the entire with the entire experience, you know, especially if the sales associate is rushing you. And um, I think it was maybe a couple months back, someone said it perfectly in the comment section on a Minx Monday. They said that they felt when they first went into the boutique to buy their bag, that it was more like a fast food drive through type of moment than this wonderful experience that so many people often talk about. You know, so it's, it's kind of a bummer that a lot of these fashion houses don't have that consistent customer service or that consistent type of environment where it makes you feel like, hey, I'm gonna be spending this amount of money on this bag or what have you. And I feel, I just really like the ambiance and all of that. Sometimes it's, it's not even that. You walk in, hey, I'm curious, do you have this bag? No, we don't have it. Next, you know what I mean? Like that's, that doesn't give me the warm and fuzzies. And in that instance, I would definitely rather go pre-loved, you know? And what I love about pre-loved, I know that, that we have also talked about this in the past, is that with those savings, you can either save the savings or you can spend that money on a uh, small leather good or on another handbag or on something completely different. And on that same note, I have to say that if you do go into the boutique to check out the bag that you're looking at and you are just digging the vibe, like the ambiance is perfect, the sales associate is being very helpful, they're taking their time with you, they're not rushing you, I think it's great to be able to purchase it right then and there. If it, feel, if it feels like everything is lining up, then absolutely go for it, you know, because kind of like what I mentioned before, you remember where you got that bag, when you got that bag, who you were with, or that day. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be Paris or anything like that. Maybe that was a bad example, but I'm just saying that sometimes the memory of where you got that bag and how it went down um, is also really great. But if you feel like you're being rushed, if you feel like you're not really being listened to when it comes to your questions or anything like that, I. I don't think anybody really wants to experience that. I mean, I can't. I can't speak for everybody. I can only speak for myself. Um, but that doesn't make that that doesn't make for a wonderful experience. So it really comes down to personal preference, or I guess a uh, a case by case scenario. Because I can see it both ways. And the more and more as the years go by, I don't know if maybe I'm seeing it differently now. Um, I'm noticing that those same boutique experiences are becoming less and less. Um, memorable or less and less special because it feels like that drive-through like that in like in and out type of thing let me take your money all right let's go let's move on to the next person and I don't think when it comes to that and that feeling no it's, de it's definitely not worth it. So I don't know if that ends up helping you out, you know, and both of the bags that you're looking at are absolutely beautiful. And I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this question. What do you think? Do you think it's worth it to go pre-loved? Do you think it's worth it to go brand new for the experience? So I don't know, again, if that ends up helping you out, but good luck. Next question from Beantown Misses. Between the Louis Vuitton front row and runaway sneakers, which one do you wear more often slash prefer? Um, all right, so I did bring them both out. This is the Louis Vuitton front row and the Louis Vuitton runaway sneaker. I love them both, uh, but I definitely feel that between the two, I end up gravitating the most towards the front row. Um, and I have had the runaway longer than this one, but even in that short amount of time, I still always end up gravitating towards it. Now with the runaway sneaker, I absolutely love the way that it looks. I haven't had any issues with like the suede um, or any type of wear and tear, which um, which I think is pretty great. I also like the fact that it does give me a little bit more height. And seeing as how I'm not the tallest person on the planet, anytime I can add either a half inch or an inch, I'll take it, you know what I mean? Uh, so I do like that as well. Um, however, these sneakers are very heavy, in my opinion, because when it comes to sneakers, uh, that's one thing that I always end up noticing. And this guy is definitely a lot heavier. It's probably one of the heaviest, if not the heaviest sneaker that I have uh, within my collection. 
Uh, so that's just one thing to know. I know that might be uh, a deal breaker for some, but I also like the fact that you can end up taking out this insole and putting in something else if you want it to be that much more comfortable. So I do think that's uh, that's great as well. Now when it comes to the front row sneaker, I don't know if you guys remember, but I had the hardest time when it comes to sizing with this shoe because I had it on my wish list forever in a day and I always felt like I was in between and I couldn't get it right. Uh, and then when I finally ended up pulling the trigger, I literally had pairs and pairs of socks with me to see what ended up working out, you know? Um, but these, uh, seeing as how they're not as heavy, maybe that's why I end up gravitating towards them a little bit more, I don't know. I also like the fact that this doesn't have any suede, it just has the monogram canvas, and then you have uh, the patent black leather, so it does make it a little bit more carefree, you know what I mean? Um, although you can end up uh, scotch guarding these. I know some people have done that, I personally haven't. Uh, but again, these also have this type of insole that uh, I've seen people end up taking out and putting uh, in different ones if they want it to be a little bit more comfortable. I feel that between the two, um, actually with both of them, there really wasn't a break-in period. I'm able to wear them for extended periods of time, no problem. I haven't had any problems with wear and tear on these either. Uh, they are pretty dirty. I know some people have mentioned that they do have the gold part of the Louis Vuitton there flaking off. I haven't experienced that, you know, and I don't, uh, I don't, you know, protect my shoes. Kind of like what I mentioned with the, uh, with the runaways. I don't scotch guard them. I don't use uh, sole protectors or anything like that. When it comes to footwear for me, it is what it is. I don't want to have to baby it. Um, and one more thing that I wanted to mention when it comes to sizing, uh, because with the runaways, I ended up going for a 38 and a half, which is actually what I ended up going for in the, if I'm not mistaken, hang on. Um, yeah, 38 and a half in the front row as well. So I had to size down. And when I spoke to the sales associate, I remember she had mentioned that usually when it comes to Louis Vuitton footwear, most people end up having to size down. Having said that, I was I would still end up recommending going into the boutique and trying them out. That way you're not in between sizes, kind of like I was, you know, for the longest time. So definitely uh, go down to the boutique and see what ends up working out for you uh, before um, before you decide to uh, to pull the trigger on them. So I don't know if that ends up helping you out, but both of them are beautiful. And whichever one you decide to get, congratulations on your new pair of kicks. Next question from Che JC. Hopefully I said that correctly. You have been collecting luxury stuff for years. Just wondering, was there a certain year that you can remember that you think was the worst because most of the purchases you had for that particular year didn't seem to work for you? Oh man. <laughs> um, okay, so there have been quite a few years that I have purchased some very funky things. <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to say, I think it was either my second, my second or my third, third year on YouTube. I can't remember like vividly, uh, but I want to say it was the second year that it was on YouTube. Um, most of the items that I got that year, I no longer have in my collection. Um, uh, back in the day, I used to get quite a few uh, Vernie pieces. I've said it before, I love Vernie. I think it is just insanely beautiful the way that the colors look. Um, but I have just come to terms with the fact that I am not really a big fan of patent leather. I don't like seeing fingerprints on small leather goods or handbags. Um, I think that year I also got um, the mini pochette in the trunks and locks, the special edition. I love special edition pieces, but I just don't, I, at the time I felt like I was babying it, even though I did use it, I was babying it. And then, you know, you hear of all the chipping that happens with those pieces if you're not careful. And I am very, very hard on my uh, mini pochettes. Like I don't, I don't baby them at all. And I don't want to have to put them in that bubble. So after that, I was like, okay, no more with special editions. Um, and I can I can honestly say that the same thing for, <laughs> for some of the bags that I got that year, uh, because I also got the, um, the what's it called, um, the Noir Magnetic uh, handbag. I believe it was that same year. I could be wrong. So now I'm giving you, <laughs> I'm giving you false information, but I feel like there have been so many purchases in the past that I look back and I'm just like, oh my God, what was I thinking? Do I regret it? No, because it, you know I've said it before. It's brought me to to this point in time, and I can really pin down what ends up working out for me. Um, but I've had some I've had some purchases in the past that I've. If you ask me now, I'd be like, oh, like what? <laughs> Were you feeling okay type of thing? <laughs> so I think it was the second year that I was on YouTube that 
yeah. <laughs> Most of the purchases just didn't uh, really end up working out for me. What about you guys? Has there been a year in the past that you can think of or that you can remember where everything or most everything that you bought that year, maybe not everything, but um, many of the purchases from that year um, you no longer have because it didn't work out for you or what have you? Let us know in the comment section down below. But great question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Carol S. What are your three least used spawn leather goods and why haven't you gotten rid of them? <laughs> Um, all right, straight to the point. Um, okay, so the first one that I have is the Hermes Bastia. Uh, this is in the Epsom leather in the color Bougainvillea, if I'm not mistaken. Um, when I first got it, I was crazy about it, but um, to be completely honest with you, I'm not really a big fan of the style for this uh, as a coin pouch. I know some people absolutely love it, that's great, but it doesn't really work out for me. Um, and then since I wasn't gonna use it for my coins, I decided that maybe I can use it as a catch-all and that didn't really last too long either. Um, and why haven't I gotten rid of it? I'm actually in the process of going through my items. Uh, so this is one of the ones that I believe is going to be on the chopping block just because of what I had just mentioned. I've already gone through some shoes, so I feel, I feel like I'm doing a little bit of progress. Uh, but yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm not the craziest of this style. Um, I, I do appreciate it for what it is, you know, if you want something a little bit more simple and something that has an amazing pop of color, this is definitely it. Uh, but it just didn't really end up working out for me. The other one is the, I think this is called the Chanel O card holder, if I'm not mistaken. But this is in the black caviar leather with the gold hardware. Uh, this is the old style. Uh, this is before they added the back pocket that you see now at the boutiques. And then on the inside, uh, you do have one compartment and then one slip pocket there, and it is a snap button closure. Um, the reason why I haven't gotten rid of it is because uh, this is one of my first Chanel small leather goods. I absolutely loved it. I used it to death. Um, so it does have a special place in my heart. Uh, but I've noticed that I don't really end up going for it too often just because it does have those two, just the two little compartments. And I've noticed that for the most part, I do end up liking either card holders or wallets that have more than two um, different compartments. Although this one is maybe a tad similar to the Ozip coin pouch that I have that I talk about all the time. Uh, so I don't know if I necessarily want to get rid of it or I thought about maybe strassing this out and by strassing it out, I think uh, I think I would definitely end up uh, using it a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so I do think it's cute and I think that the back pocket, it was a great addition uh, that they added to this item. Uh, but um, I just find that other wallets that I have have a little bit more function than this guy does. And that brings me to number three. I know you guys are gonna be like, what is wrong with you? It is the Louis Vuitton Pochette Voyage in the Monogram Eclipse. I know, I know. I talk about the Monogram Eclipse all the time. And uh, I do like this Pochette Voyage. I think it is insanely beautiful. I also like the fact that it does have uh, these little compartments on the inside so that way you can use, or the credit card slots, so you can use it as a clutch. It's a little bit easier and it also has the textile lining versus um, the, uh, you know, the wipeable interior that the Toiletry 26s have. But having said that, I am just not really a clutch person. And this is kind of like what I talked about on my wish list video, when there are designs or when there are styles that I know in my heart of hearts don't work out for me. You know, I kind of feel like Cinderella's uh, ugly stepsister trying to fit her foot in that shoe and you know it's not going to work. That's kind of, um, that's kind of how I feel with some, you know, with some silhouettes, and this is one of them. I think that it's beautiful, and I have used it in the past, but I'm just not the craziest about clutches. I need some type of shoulder strap. I need a chain. I need something. It makes me feel a lot more comfortable, um, you know, so I... Um, I think this one is also on the chopping block. It is just, it is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. But as far as it being practical and functional for me and for my lifestyle, 
it just doesn't end up working out. And the craziest thing is that uh, because the Pushette Voyage is so similar uh, to the Toiletry 26, I've had two other Toiletry 26s. I had it in the Demi Azor Tahitian. I've also had it in the in the Monogram. And I've, I've, I bought them both. I sold them both, you know, and then I went for this one or maybe this was in between the two. I can't remember. Um, and I think, I mean, I got to be honest with you. What holds me back the most is the fact that it's monogram eclipse. Like that's that's not a good, that's not a good reason, you know. But I have to fully detach before before I go to sell it. Otherwise, I'll have seller's remorse. So I don't know. I know. I feel I feel like I'm Fifty Shades of Crazy. Do you guys are you guys the same way? Please let me know. Some of you guys are the same way. Uh, but those three: the Pochette Voyage from Louis Vuitton, the Hermes Bastia, and the uh, Chanel O card holder in the black caviar caviar. But I'm curious, do you guys have any small leather goods that you don't use, but you just have a really hard time getting rid of? If you do, let us know in the comment section down below. It's a great question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Malibu Karina. If you could pick only one fashion house to buy from, which one would it be? Considering the designs and customer service in the store. Throwing a little twist in this one. Um, okay, so if I can only pick one fashion house to buy from and I have to take into consideration the designs and customer service, I'm going to have to say Chanel. Um, now with our customer service, yes, I have had my run-ins with uh, sales associates in the past that weren't so nice, but for the most part, uh, many of them have been uh, very helpful. Many of them have been incredibly friendly. And when it comes to Chanel's designs, I feel like they don't, I mean, they do have some silhouettes that are a little out there. You know, sometimes they might have too many bells and whistles, but as a brand, I don't feel that they're too, I don't feel that they go too far off, you know, with, uh, with their styles. For the most part, I feel like they are somewhat simple. They either have the quilted, um, the quilted detail or the chevron detail or a few others, you know, but they don't have so much that you're just like, what kind of bag is this? You know what I mean? I feel like when I see a Chanel bag, I can always tell it's a Chanel bag versus other fashion houses that when you see a bag, um, you're just like, whoa, that's way off brand type of thing. I don't know. That's the way that I feel. There are things, there are things from Chanel <laughs> that aren't the, you know, the best and, you know, kind of like their, <laughs> their prices are getting a little crazy. I know we've talked about this before. Um, but when it comes to their customer service and with their designs, 100%, 100%, I would have to say Chanel. But I'm curious, what about you guys? If you can only pick from one fashion house and you have to take into consideration those two things, the design and customer service, which one would it be? Let us know in the comment section down below. But fabulous question and hopefully I was able to answer it. And the last question from Deborah. Deborah, I'm not even going to attempt to say your last name because I know I will butcher it, so my apologies. But Deborah L, when you buy pre-love from a seller such as Fashion File, do you use an authentication service before purchasing? Yes, I do every single time. You know, and I've said it before. I know that we've talked about this in the past, um, but it has it really has nothing to do with who I'm buying it from because uh, obviously I have been purchasing from Fashion File for years, you know, and I do trust them. At the same time, I want that extra piece of mind and I don't think that's anything I don't think that's bad um, I always want to get that peace of mind it does make me feel a little bit better and I think that when it comes to the prices that we pay for luxury goods be it a handbag shoes small of the goods whatever it might be anything that gives you that extra or that added peace of mind I think is always great um, you know because in the past I have been burned before and maybe that's the reason why I'm so I feel like maybe I'm, maybe some people might think I'm a little too, uh, I'm being too careful or I'm being too paranoid. Uh, but in the past, I have been burned and it, it's not a good feeling. And, you know, um, I was very naive in the past uh, when I was a lot younger and I just don't want to go through that ever again. It was a terrible, they were terrible experiences. So in my eyes, it's kind of like, I'd rather be safe than sorry. One of the companies that I use is called Real Authentication and I absolutely love them. I have used them many, many of times. I always, always recommend them. Uh, they have an awesome turnaround time. They have low prices as well. So it's not like you're gonna be paying an arm and a leg to get it authenticated. And they are insanely thorough. I am talking crazy, crazy thorough. Um, I remember I ended up sending uh, pictures to them. I think it was probably like 10 or 15 pictures. I thought I got every single angle that I can think of and they requested more. They're like, hey, can you can you get this? Can you get that? You know, so I had to get in touch 
with uh, with the seller uh, and I was able to provide them for them. So the fact that they go above and beyond is, I mean, I, I can't even put into words how much I appreciate it because again, it goes back to the whole peace of mind. Uh, so I am all for getting your items authenticated, whether you buy it from a reputable source, whether you're buying it from, you know, from a group or from whomever. Um, I don't think that's a bad thing at all. Uh, but I'm curious, do you guys always get your items authenticated before you purchase it or after you pur uh, purchase it? Let us know in the comment section down below. So hopefully that was able to help. Um, all right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. Before I let you go, I have been getting so many questions as to why I don't end up showing the handbag of the day. Uh, is there a reason behind it and stuff like that? There isn't like a crazy reason. All I was trying to do was I figured new year, new decade, let's have a different intro. I don't want to have the same intro every single time. So that's the only reason I took it off, you know, but if you guys want to, if you guys want me to reincorporate that into the videos, let me know in the, in the comment section down below. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I was like, oh, let's go for something different. And I kind of touched base on it um, at the beginning of the year. Um, and it, going through that video, I know people were like, yeah, yeah, you know, come up with a different, um, with a different intro. So, <laughs> so that's the only reason, <laughs> but if you guys want to let me know in the comment section down below, I just thought maybe it was getting boring, you know, seeing the, not the same bag cause they're always different bags, but just the same intro. I feel like sometimes it can get a little bit. You can get a little stale, you know? <laughs> but anyways, so that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week and I will see you later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.